Welcome to part 3. Now that we've set up the basic files and set up our database, the next step is to start the coding. And I've looked at how I want to build this project, and I figure that the first thing we probably want to work on is the template object. This will be the object that will display our views. And the first thing that I want to do is to work on a temporary view that we use to test things. So I'm going to open up my v underscore login dot php file and I'm just going to fill it with some sample html for the moment. So I'm just putting in standard html code, I have a doc type, I'm normal html, head and body tags, and I'm going to fill this with a little bit of sample information just temporarily. And I'm also going to include the uh, CSS style sheet. And you'll notice that the link to the style sheet includes the views folder, and I'll explain that more in a second. So let me open up style.css, and it looks like this. I have already set up all the code for this style sheet just to save a little bit time um, in this video series. So I'd suggest pausing the video, copying in the code, and then starting the video back up again once you're done. You can also download this code if you want. Um, I've included the source files with these videos, so please take a look at that. It might be faster to simply copy and paste from an existing file. So now that style.css is fully populated with your code, let's go ahead and work, in, uh, work on our login.php controller. And I'm going to start out just with some simple sample code just to make sure our view is working properly. So I'm going to start out with an opening PHP tag. I'm going to include the view. So views v underscore login dot PHP. Close that off. And as I talked about earlier, the reason why we need the views folder included in our style sheet reference is we are going to be using includes to display these view files. So the path to that CSS file will be based on the controller login.php rather than where the view file itself is located. So keep that in mind. Any links that appear within the views, um, they actually reference the main folder, not relative to where the views are located. Um, one other thing that I wanted to discuss briefly, I'm going to be doing something slightly different with this particular series and uh, follow along with uh, PHP best practice, which is often, in many cases, you don't want to include the closing PHP tag for files that contain only PHP content. Um, WordPress does this, quite a few you know, um, PHP based systems do this. And the reason why you don't want to include the closing tag is, one, it's not necessary, um, but mainly because you might accidentally have spaces that get put in um, after the closing PHP tag. For example, like this. And if you're dealing with uh, the header function, or just, it causes issues, and it's best to avoid this. So one of the best practices I'm going to be showing you today is um, leaving the closing PHP tag off. And as I said, this is only for files that only contain PHP content. The server is smart enough to understand that this file, once it has an opening PHP tag, all contents within the file are PHP and you don't need a closing PHP tag. So let's go ahead and test this. And it looks like everything's working properly. Uh, we have our test content and it looks like the styling is showing up correctly styling that um, appears within the style.css file. 
So the next step after this is to get started on our templates object. So I'm going to open up the template file. It's m underscore template.php within the models. And you'll notice I have an opening PHP tag and I have a comment that's going to start all of my model files that indicates what is contained within this file. Um, in this case it's going to be a template class and this class is going to handle all templating tasks. Anything related to displaying views, um, showing alerts or errors, anything like that. So to get started on this, um, we're going to start with a class template, like so. And we're going to probably start by initializing the controller, or the constructor, excuse me. So I like adding comments just to keep my file neat and tidy. So I'm going to do function. I'm going to do two underscores and construct. And this uh, constructor doesn't actually need to do anything, but I always include it just in case we need to edit things later. And then below this, I'm going to start off with my functions. And the first function that I want to build out is a function that I'm going to call load. And basically, it's going to replace the includes that we've been using previously, so include. Um, and it's pretty simple, it's just going to be a wrapper function, so function load, and we're going to provide it a URL that we want to load, and we're going to include that URL. So I'm going to save it, let's go back to login.php, and let's tweak this code to test our object that we just created. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this code use slash v underscore login dot php because we'll use it in a second and instead of including the view immediately I'm going to include our template code so I'm going to do that by using the include and instead linking in models m underscore template dot php. So that'll include this file so we now have access to the template and I'm going to create a new template object. So template equals new template. And my variable has an uppercase first letter just to indicate it's an object and um, keeps that in the back of my mind for future reference. Just a best practice thing that I do. So now that we have the object created, let's go ahead and use that object. We're going to do template load and we're going to pass in the path to our view file. Save it and let's preview this. So you'll notice everything is working correctly. It looks like we are correcting the template object correctly. We are loading the view. Now you may argue, well, you know, we have three lines here. Why is doing this approach better than simply using one include and including the view? And the reason I would argue that this method is better is it's a little bit easier to scan. Um, you immediately know that this particular path is related to the template and you know you're loading this particular file. So it just keeps that in the back of my mind. It makes my code a little bit easier to scan. And you could use a simple include, but this gives it a little bit of a context. It indicates, as I said before, that it's related to the template object and it's loading a specific view.